Hello, hey. I'm Paul Spritzi. I'm the programming director for the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. And I'm here with uh, Fabian Velasco and Milos Mitrovic, the directors of Tapeworm. Hi, guys. Hey. How's it going? How's it going? Good. Yeah. Just shooting a movie? <laughs> oh, we can't. Um, I guess I'm not hearing you. Oh, are you muted? Um, I'm not muted, no. Can you hear me now? You don't look like you're muted, but I'm not hearing you. Can you hear me? I'm not muted. Can you hear me now? No. Do you want to try? Um... Hey, Paul, can you hear me? Oh, you know what? I think it's at my end, actually. Hang on. Try it again. Hey, can you hear me? You are. Okay, hey. sorry. That was... Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Good, good. Just shooting a movie. We're shooting a movie right now. Oh, really? What's, hey. the, what's the movie? It's a short film. Uh, it's being filmed in my bathroom. So we just set up all the stuff in the bathroom and then we got into this little room. Like, yeah, yeah we shot all day yesterday. It's uh, like kind of a funny, weird movie about. I play this guy that's a farmer and his brother, who's played by Sam Singer, who's in a tapeworm. Um, we're like super paranoid of each other and we sell broken iPads. And then I decide to kill him. Oh, amazing. <laughs> kind of like a funny, weird movie. That's so cool. That's great. Great. You guys are staying, uh, staying active with, with the filmmaking. I, I know I saw your, um, your other uh, short with Alex. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Um, so t tell us a little bit about how did you guys get started with Tapeworm? Um, what was the genesis of this project? The genesis? Uh... Well, I mean, I think that like what happened was we were like Fabian really wanted to make a feature really badly and I didn't really want to make a feature. I thought that we should be making shorts a little bit more, but we were like, let's make a feature and then um, we started thinking about ideas and the initial idea was the Adam Brooks story of the guy that has tapeworm and then, uh, or maybe that he doesn't have tapeworm, probably not. And then, um, what happened was Fabian went to Argentina and then I wrote this like super long version of the script that was, it was too much stuff. So then we just started cutting it down, cutting it down, cutting it down, changing it, changing it so much. And then we just said, screw it, we're going to shoot it. Then we shot in October of 2017, we shot the first scene and the last scene of the movie. Then the actress dropped out. So then we had to reshoot that part. We kept shooting with the other characters. And then, uh, yeah, that's, we, we did a lot of improvisation for the movie and that's kind of how it went down. Cool. Yeah, it kind of went from like a really complex script that would have needed like millions upon millions of dollars and it would have been kind of fantasy. -y. Like the ending was so insane. Like, like Adam was supposed to be underwater and there's all these water creatures coming out and then we're like, fuck, I just not even have a script and then we just made what Tatum was, which was... Completely yeah, the ending was supposed to be a ripoff of the movie Underground by Ended Kusturica. Have you ever seen that movie? By Kusturica? Uh, uh, it's called underground so what happens is like these people jump in a well and then they're all swimming in a well and it looks like uh they're in like this ocean swimming it's supposed to be really uh you know a magical realistic and then we just dropped that and we decided to go the realist route and just make a really neo-realist film sort of nice nice well when, when you do the big studio remake you can uh add that yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so I was just watching it now, like, I, you know, of course, the, you know, the comedy in it, it really popped out to me the first time, but, but um, uh, I was kind of thinking of it also in terms of, you know, there's so much disconnect in, disconnection between these characters, but, but there, there is this kind of, um, obviously, a connection at the very beginning and the very end. So, so did you guys think about that in terms of the... I'm sure you did in terms of the just the trajectory, the emotional trajectory of the film. Yeah, we kind of wanted to like do like a circle that it kind of comes back to the beginning. So we kind of loosely knew that that was going to be the movie, like start kind of like in the same place and then everything else in between. We would just come up with like 
right before shooting, a couple of days before we're supposed to shoot, we'd come up with these situations or scenes and that could happen that had not really a whole lot to do, like um, in terms of storyline. We were we were not really that interested in like a you know like a more uh, standard like narrative. We were more interested in the mood and the tone of the movie, and then just kind of loosely connect that as we went, but knowing that it would come back to that at the end. I guess. Cool, cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about Alex. Her her stand up is so strangely hilarious. Um, is that is that kind of her is that kind of her thing? Yeah, like the, the, those are like her jokes. We told her uh, like come, uh, that that she needed to come up with all these jokes that she was going to perform. So those were written all by herself, and um, yeah, I think, like her routine is pretty much the same. Like if you follow her on Instagram or where she's always posting stories and like talking kind of like that, and she does she plays she she lives in Toronto. She's not she she's formerly from Winnipeg, but she moved to Toronto, and uh, she performs in Toronto like doing that kind of routine. And occasionally she'll come to Winnipeg and then she'll do shows here in Winnipeg. And, and we thought it would be pretty funny that she makes kind of comedy that's sort of this deadpan style humor, that the movie is sort of a deadpan style humor movie. And we thought it would be super meta if we were making a movie where she made jokes that were deadpan and ironic, sort of, you know, sarcastic sounding, which is, and then nobody laughs at it in the movie, but in real life, people laugh at it. So it's this whole meta thing going on. Or sometimes people don't even laugh at it because the humor is very dry. So people don't laugh. They just, you know, with dry humor, you kind of acknowledge that it's funny sometimes. Yeah. Like if you watch On Cinema at the Cinema with Tim Heidecker and Greg Turkington, I mean, I don't laugh out loud at that, but I like it because I think it's yeah. funny, but I don't like die laughing all the time. Sometimes I do die laughing. Cool, cool. Well, um, I, I, I was also very taken with your uh, performance Milos like you're, like just meeting you in person you're so completely not that character and there's just something so so very so really dead about that character and and um <laughs> he has that line about we're gonna fish and get buff with Mitch and it's just mm -hmm. like it was so <laughs> so yeah, uh, the reason why I came up with that because our grip that day was really great guy and he he talks a lot and he was talking the whole time and I was hiding behind a refrigerator as I walk in and he was talking to the sound person about how him and another friend of mine Eric are gonna go fishing and they're just gonna work out and eat fish in his cabin for the rest of the year kind of thing and I kept laughing thinking about how stupid that was so then when we went into the rehearsal, I just started saying that and I couldn't stop laughing every time I would say it. And we just kept it going with that. We thought that was a really funny, like, kind of like a, you know, macho man thing to say. And my character is kind of this weird soulless person that's just like, he thinks he's so obsessed with getting um, some sort of like human interaction. Um, but all he knows is sort of video games. So it seems almost like he says that, you know, because he thinks that that's what people should be like. And uh, what I found really interesting was, and, you know, maybe Fabian thought of this before, but I never even thought of this, is that my character just plays soccer all the time. And he's just so, uh, he's sort of like, all he knows is the video game. Then he goes into the world and then he tries to play soccer, but instead he just hoops the ball just a screw with the people. And then the people are like, what's wrong with you? And then he just goes and gets the ball. So his only human interaction where he's actually playing soccer with two people is just goes horribly. So uh, I thought that was pretty interesting and kind of tied that yeah. whole story together. That's, yeah, that's fascinating. Um, yeah. How did you, I mean, I guess, how did you find that character um, as an actor? Um, how did I find that character as an actor? I mean, for me, like, well, oh, your, yeah. my character, yeah. So for me, like, I mean, I was trying to go for, like, the weirdo sort of um, staying at home, playing video games. Sort She's of. like the epitome of the empty social white guy kind of thing. You know, yeah. The, the, the 
people on the internet all the time, just reading up on the consuming all this toxic energy online, you know, like that kind of archetype. Yeah, that kind of, yeah, exactly. Who just like, you know, you hear about it all the time with people online who live in their parents' basements. And it's just supposed to show this like really dull, depressing sort of um, person who's just, um, you know, soulless almost. Yeah, I, I guess my question was also like, how did you, how did you create that character that's that's so different from who you are in a way that that comes across authentic? That's a good question. I don't really know. Like, I think that like, because I one thing that I tried to do was just talk really monotonously and just um, sort of be very emotionless with everything that I do. Um, I always, every time we make movies together, I always try to create, like if I act in it, I try to make a character that's completely different from the character that I was in in the other movie. So the movie that we made before this movie was called Imitations, where I play the super fan of this Austin Kelsey pop star. His, uh, his name's Austin Kelsey. And I played a really lonely person in that movie who's like really weird. But I think that this character, we tried to get like this, like sort of, he wants to be like a really masculine kind of guy, but he doesn't even know anything about the world outside of him because he just sits at home all day. And, um, you know, I just tried to play it by watching, I don't know, like a lot of interviews with, I don't know, like strange people. I watched this show called JCS, Jim Can't Swim, where people get interrogated um, uh, after doing like a crime and some of those interrogations. Uh, from the people that do these like terrible crimes, they're just so weird and like monotonous that I was really into that. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about the um, so? Um, I was also impressed. That, I mean, I haven't been to Winnipeg, but I mean, you make it look like probably the dreariest place on earth. And I know you guys shot on sixteen, so uh, I guess what were the challenges of, of shooting on film, and then and and how did you achieve that particular uh, look? Well, the shooting on film, the, the main problem with that is that it, we improvised a lot. So we didn't have a full script unless we didn't have a lot of rehearsals and like the actors a lot of times they, they wouldn't know what they'd be saying right until we shot. And uh, so that was kind of a challenge to improvise on film because we're not a lot, like we weren't able to do a whole lot of takes. Like we did maybe two takes per scene or per shot and uh, at most. And then, um, so we can do a lot of coverage and then for the dread or you know the, the ambient kind of tone of the movie we just shot the empty buildings of you know Winnipeg or which is kind of like in the neighborhood that we live anyway so we didn't really go out too much to seek out this terrible place it's just step out of your apartment and it's kind of there and um yeah so uh, but other than that true yeah like I'm also like a lot of the actors were um, um I'm professional like you know non non-actors, so like friends of ours, so, so for that, that was also kind of maybe like a challenge, like do the blocking and figure out like the scenes and stuff, but other than that, I don't know, it was fairly loose. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, um, I, I also, I was noticing there's just this theme of, of just coiled rage in the film, and is, is that something that you guys kind of pick up pick up on that's that's around you or or, 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 how, or how did you choose to ha have that be I guess it's a you know it's a great dramatic element but uh but anything else you can say about that about the, the rage yeah the I don't know I guess we we do I don't know I don't want to sound mean we're all we're always like attacking each other or like other people and like laughing at things that are really cringy and like I don't know, a lot of that came from that, just uh, observing all these like things that happen to people, like, you know, insignificant for the most part, like slipping on the street and then you just kind of watch from far away and then you just watch their shame. And those are the things that are entertaining. Like, you know, like going back to Alex, not, 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 not that this happens to her, but I like going to stand up comedy when the comedians are like, just bombing on set and like the, the awkward like tension in a room 
of an amateur stand-up comedian or like the, the, the audience isn't really responding to me that's like such a painful thing yeah i could you know i always wanted to be a stand-up comedian but i was way too scared of that happening and i think that like that's definitely a thing of like you have a feeling of you're just watching you know when somebody bombs a stand-up act it's just horrifying to be in the crowd watching something like that so that's so we wanted, yeah, to create those experiences. And a lot of that, we also put a lot of like things that happened to us in our movie, like, you know, going back to Milos, he used to live at home until a couple of years ago. So while we were shooting- One year. One year, yeah. And while we were shooting those scenes of Milos with his mom being dressed, he's still also, I think, we were living at home and like his mom, you know, she's like too nice. She buys him clothes sometimes from time to time and all these little things that we exaggerate for but literally that happens to me. Like the, my mom puts on my clothes and gets me to walk around. Except the only difference is she does it in public. So if I go to her at Polo Park, like a 29, I'm 30 now, 29 year old man at like Polo Park or mall, you know, and my mom's making me walk around the store. And <laughs> like, that's so embarrassing. Yeah. And uh, we just thought that would be funny to like put in a movie. That's amazing. Um, what about, um, so are you guys, uh, you know, I was, I've been thinking about like the idea that we're so also connected now through Zoom and everything. Are, are you guys cool just hanging out in Winnipeg? Is there like, th does it nurture you? Is there a good, good scene there that, that you guys, that's sustainable for you? Or, or I don't know, I see Fabian uh, wins. Uh, <laughs> no, personally, I'm, I don't know. We're not the biggest fans of like the, the going out scene in Winnipeg. I don't know, like there's like four bars that I, I don't really, care for do you mean like the winnipeg movie scene or do you mean like just going just out in general? general just living in winnipeg i don't know like, yeah like like how is it for you uh, like both personally and as filmmakers is it some a place where you that you want to stay that, that, that that's you know i would love to move to la i know so many people from la i would love that's my dream but i think that i'm doomed to stay in yeah, so I, I, unless I, there's a producer a big producer who's watching the movie right now who wants to offer us a lot of money to move to LA to work on a movie in LA. Hey, I'm in it a hundred percent. I would love to live in LA. Um, and I know like Ariel uh, from, uh, we both know Ariel from, uh, he made Molly Single. We know uh, 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 Alex. Uh, who? Alex. Alex Kavitsky as well, who worked with, it, with Ariel. And then I know, we know like- uh, We know Pitt, Clooney, we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> no, we don't know Pitt, Clooney. But we do know another guy that made a movie that's playing at this festival, uh, Da. Last name, Da. Oh, Fred Da. Oh, Frederick, Frederick. Da, yeah, Frederick. Yeah, and we were- we Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, I don't know. And of course, everyone from Slam Dance we know. We know you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like you could probably couch surf for a few weeks. Yeah, we can kind of couch until I like, really like I so I can sell the screenplay that I'm writing. Cool. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know. I think yeah, we are probably doomed to live here forever, which is fine. I don't mind. Like like COVID didn't really hit that much. Like all the bars are open. We haven't really taken like a big dent. Like you're allowed to go out and drink and. Fun, which but I, I don't do that. I don't, yeah, I don't really do that anyway. I'm very paranoid about COVID, so I don't go out. I don't do anything. We're all wearing masks during the shooting, and, and uh, even though it's not really bad here at all for COVID. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I noticed you guys are like six feet apart there. So, so. Yeah. I, yeah, all the chairs are like being used for lights and stuff. We're all wearing masks, and, and uh, I, we had a, I had a surreal experience. I taught, I teach at the U of W and I had my first sort of in-person lab on Thursday and I came in and it's so hot in the, in the room and everyone's wearing masks and I couldn't think straight. And I just got them to go shoot in different sides of the, you know, building. And, uh, that was a weird and tough experience. So I don't know, like there's weird parts about, you know, the whole COVID thing for sure. I think the movie scene here is kind of cool. Like it's like super small, so we all know each other. So we get, you know, we work on movies for free. We get a lot of help for free. We get a lot of support. And uh, it's, yeah, I find it fairly supportive. We had a theater run of Tapeworm and like a lot of people that I didn't know showed up. I thought it was me, oh, it's gonna be like my family and a couple of my friends, but all these, you know, like actual patrons of the, uh, of cinema just showed up and I don't know, things like that are cool. 
Yeah, we do have a really cool film scene here with a lot of great. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of like, so for the, how small the city is, there's quite a few successful filmmakers here. You know, you guy Madden, you know, Matthew Ryan came in. Mike Marinette. Mike Marinette. Mike Marinette. Mike yeah, he did it with the Goose, I think. And yeah. uh, so, so there's a lot of that for how small we are. I think so that's cool and everybody's just really willing to help on each other's movies so you're allowed to you know like if you have a little budget you can spread it out quite a bit and you can make things with for a little bit of money so that's cool nice, nice. yeah well cool well well it's so nice chatting with you guys again yeah. and uh, yeah thanks a lot for for sharing tapeworm with, uh, with the now place audience yeah. and um yeah looking forward to, to the short suit you guys are <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks.